What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Motorola, Moto G Pure, tips and tricks, and hidden features. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a variety of different things that you're definitely going to want to know about to get the most out of the Moto G Pure. Now the first feature that I want to show you to enable is the battery percentage. So by default, there is no battery percentage in the upper right corner. Obviously there is the battery icon, but just by glancing at that, it doesn't give you a whole lot of information. So to get the battery percentage, you're going to pull down the shade, you're going to tap on this gear in the bottom right corner, that'll take you to the settings. You're then going to go to search settings, type in battery and search. And then from here, you'll see right there battery percentage and then enable that. And then now, no matter where you are throughout the interface here in the phone, you're going to see that battery percentage in the upper right corner. So that's definitely something that I highly recommend doing, and I personally do it with any phone that I'm using for an extended period. Now also, in this battery section, we have Battery Saver, which is pretty self-explanatory, but essentially, by enabling this, it will switch the phone to dark theme, and it will restrict certain background activities, but in return, you're going to be getting the maximum amount of battery life as possible with the phone. So there we go, that's now enabled. And you can see it is in dark theme right now. Now I don't recommend just enabling battery saver all the time. Only really use it when you know that you're not gonna have access to an outlet, just because again, it does hinder certain background tasks on the phone. So if you wanna get the most out of your phone, you probably don't wanna have this enabled at all times. And what's cool though, is that if you do enable battery saver and then you put the phone on a charger, battery saver will turn off when the phone is at 90%. So that definitely is pretty nice as well. So keep that in mind, we have battery saver and then also the battery percentage. Now moving on, there is a setting here on the phone that if you're not too familiar with Motorola's interface, you might not even know exists, and that is the home screen settings. So hold your finger down on the home screen, and you'll see right here we have some different options, and one of them is home settings. So going there, we have a variety of different options, the first one is notification dots. Now, I don't have any notification dots currently present here in the phone, but essentially if I got a text message or a missed call, for example, it will show a little dot in the upper right corner indicating that I got a notification from that particular app. So that is enabled by default, but if you want to turn that off, you can do that as well. And by tapping on that, it does take you over to the notification settings area, and then you can see advanced, and we have notification dots right there. So if you wanna disable that, you have the ability to do it. I personally don't think it's very distracting, but maybe you have a bunch of apps that have notification dots on them and it's not really helpful to you, then you can at least disable it right here. Now going back over to the home settings, we also have the ability to customize the icon size. So if you want larger icons or smaller icons, you can adjust this to your liking. In addition to that, we can also adjust the home screen style. So if you want to have an app tray where you swipe up to see all apps in that tray, that is enabled by default. There's also this other option as well that will show all of your apps on the home screen, kind of similar to how iOS was in the past before they gave us the app library. So just another customization that you could make if you want to change things up a little bit. We also have allow home screen rotation. So if you enable that, and then you allow rotation on the phone itself. You can see we can rotate things here and we can now use the entire home screen in this landscape setup here. So I can see that coming in handy if maybe your phone is mounted on your car dashboard. I'm not sure, I mean, it's probably a pretty limited use case here, but I do like that we have at least the ability to make that customization. And then you can also adjust the app label. So if you want to have two rows for the app label or one row, or if you want no labels for any of your apps, you can do that as well. And you can see as a result of making that change, there's now no labels for any of the apps here on the device. So again, probably something that you won't be enabling, but on the other hand, maybe something that you didn't know about that you now do know about. In addition, we can also customize widgets, wallpapers, and then you can even customize the theme of the phone through the style menu. So you can see you can change the color of the various 
device toggle icons. You can add other themes as well. I'm not going to get too deep into this for now, but again, it is here if that is something you want to customize. So pretty awesome. Of course, that is one of the biggest benefits with Android. You do get quite a few more customizations than you would get with iOS. Now, the next thing I want to show you is called gestures. This is definitely pretty awesome. So you're going to go up to the settings once again, type in gestures. We'll let that load. There we go, gestures. And we have a variety of different options here. So the first one is swipe fingerprint for notifications. So I'll enable that right now. But essentially, if you swipe down on the fingerprint sensor, it will lower the notification shade. So there we go. One swipe pulls it down partially, and then a second swipe pulls it down all the way to access these quick toggles here. Then we also have double press power key. So by default, right now, if you double press in the power key, it will launch the assistant. You can also disable it completely, or if you want it to launch the camera, which I personally prefer, you can have it do that. So now, no matter where you are throughout the phone, if you double press in the power key, it will pull up the camera. So there's the camera right there, and there's me right here. We also have system navigation. So by default, we have the gesture-based navigation with the phone. This is pretty similar to how it is on iOS, but essentially, if you want to go back to the traditional three-button Android navigation, you can do that here. So go to system navigation, go to three-button navigation, and then you'll see in a second, there we go. We now have the standard traditional three-button Android navigation. So back, home, and recent apps. So if your previous Android phone had these buttons and you prefer that, over having gestures, then just know that you can switch the phone over to that if you want to. I know that there's a lot of people who really don't like or care for the gestures on Android, and they'd much rather just keep these three buttons. So I definitely understand that. Now there's a few other options like prevent ringing and power menu, but I wanna show you this one. This is called three finger screenshot. So essentially if you touch the display with three fingers, it will take a screenshot. So that is enabled actually by default, but you might have not been aware of that. So I'll take three fingers right here, and you can see, there we go, it took the screenshot. Then from there we can edit or share or delete. I'll take another one. There we go, so definitely a very quick and efficient way to take screenshots here on the Moto G Pier. Another interesting one is fast flashlight, so you can turn the flashlight on or off in two chopping motions. Again, this is enabled by default, but you might have not been aware of it already. So you can see doing that chopping motion does turn on the flashlight and then doing it once again turns the flashlight off. So a pretty cool feature there. I'm glad that they did include that here with the Moto G Pure. And then finally, there's swipe to split. So you can see apps in split screen by swiping back and forth. So this is not on by default, but I will enable it right now. So for example, I have this website pulled up, but I also wanna pull up my calendar at the same time. So I'm gonna go like this. So we have the first app up above here, of course, the original app. Then I'll go over here and grab the calendar, and then now the calendar is on the bottom half of the display. And then I can also make some adjustments here to make one larger or another smaller. And then if I want one of the apps to take over completely, then I can swipe one way or another completely. So pretty awesome there, definitely a nice feature that you cannot do on any iPhone, which is still pretty surprising. Now another thing I wanna show you really quickly, which I'm sure some people already know about, but that is adjusting the screen timeout. So by default, with this device, and you're gonna to go to the settings and the display here, but by default with the phone, I believe it is set at one minute for the screen timeout, but sometimes you don't want the screen to turn off that quickly. So for demonstration purposes, I did set it to 30 minutes, but if you wanna set it to two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, it really depends on your personal preference, but you do have the ability to adjust that right here. And then the last feature I wanna show you is called Flip for DND. So you're gonna pull down the shade, Go to the settings, go to search, type in flip, let that load, eventually. <laughs> there we go. Okay, flip for DND. So that is off by default, but essentially if you flip the phone down on its face, it will put the phone in do not disturb mode. So this is really useful, for example, if you're gonna be going into a meeting and typically you like to have your phone ringtone on, 
but you do want the phone to go into do not disturb if you're going into a meeting, then again, with this enabled, all you have to do is put the phone face flat, and then you might've heard it vibrate right there, but essentially you'll now put the phone into do not disturb mode. And what's especially awesome about this is that as soon as you pick the phone up, it will take it out of that mode. So certainly they're useful there. But I hope you found these various tips and tricks and hidden features for the Moto G Pure to be helpful. I'm definitely curious to know what you think about this device. And so far, I think it's a really solid entry-level offering from Motorola. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. This is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and have a great day.